Good morning, good morning, good morning. You doing okay, woman of God? Good. Thank you for joining me this morning. Good morning, Apostle. How you doing? Good, good, good. Everybody doing okay? I apologize. I had some issues going on with my computer. And so I had to switch over to my laptop. But we're going to go ahead and get started. Let me get my Bible. Good morning. Everybody doing okay? I thank you all for joining me this morning. Because I believe that the Spirit of the Lord is going to meet us here. He already here. Let me get my periscope together. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Okay, I'm going to introduce myself. My name is Apostle Elisa um, Biggers. I'm the senior leader at Sword and Shield International Ministries. And this is a spinoff from my um, weekly broadcast of called Deliver Me From Me. Um, and we talked about Thursday, about demonic voices in the house. And a lot of times uh, we're coming from the standpoint that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. And so with your body being the temple of the Holy Spirit, that blesses woman of God, that a lot of times... We're dealing with demonic voices, but sometimes in the body of Christ, we don't understand that we got um, um, demonic spirits. I have found out in the body of Christ, good morning, Brittany, that we don't realize that we have voices. You know, you hear voices telling you you're not good enough, you're not smart enough, that you're not going to make it, um, things are too hard, uh, uh, um, uh, you, you, you don't have uh, long hair, uh, that job, you might as well... Quit, that job ain't yours. Uh, you can, you're too old to get a house. You're too old to get married. Um, all kind of things. Good morning. That we hear in our bodies, and and and, and we got to realize that demons. They they I always tell people you got to remember we're a spiritual being. We got a soul. We got a spirit. And we got a body. And a lot of times we hear demonic voices in our souls. And a lot of times. We um, contributed to it being our thoughts, not understanding that it's not our thoughts, that it's the thoughts of um, demons come in through situations. We're coming from Proverbs 26 and 2. Good morning. It says that a curse can't come without a cause. In other words, something has to happen. And when something happens, good morning, Apostle. When something happens, your spiritual house is open to those demonic spirits. And a lot of times we are spiritually sick and we don't realize that we're sick. We just go on um, feeling like time is going to heal everything. But we got to understand time is not going to heal everything until we got to begin to deal with it. The Bible say that Jesus cast the evil spirits out of people. A lot of times we try to pray for our unclean spirits on the inside of us, but how many know you can't pray for unclean spirits? And I found out when you get ready to, to, um, to be delivered, a lot of times some saints don't want to work for it. You know, this is just like, this is 3, 3 a.m. If you want God to deliver you, you're going to get up because if you tired of yourself, good morning, because I don't know about you. I know I was messed up. I know I was in a bad place and I know it took the power power of God um, to deal with me. I had to confront the issues, my thoughts, my thought process that I thought about myself. And I want to say that even if you want to be delivered, you, you can't think that it's just going to just happen. No, you got to work with Holy Spirit because a lot of times we didn't get like this overnight and you can't think it's just going to poof away just like this because sometimes we've been like this. Even These are the money spirits that has been in us um, since childhood. And now that we're adults and we thinking just because I prayed this prayer, oh, it's just gone. No, no this is just a beginning to teach you. This is where God want to... Uh, Show you that you're not by yourself. I have found out blessings, woman of God. A lot of saints um, don't want to own up to having unclean spirits on the inside of them. And see, and this is where we got to begin to be willing to say, yeah, you know what? I, I have thoughts of self-hatred. I have thoughts where I don't like myself. I have thoughts that, you know what? I want to commit suicide, especially when you're dealing with COVID. A lot of people are, are struggling, dealing with fears and uh, depression, oppression and suppression. And they thinking that this is me not understanding that this is a demonic spirit 
because they contributed to it's in my mind not understanding that demonic spirits that's where they live at in your soul and see, and this is where we got to begin to pay attention and we got to begin to say no just like i let you in no, I'm going to let you out. As a matter of fact, I'm going to cash you out because we got to get tired of the devil living free on the inside of this house. The only person who should be living in this house is the spirit of the true and living God. And so and this is where we're going to go from. So we're going to pray from Hebrews the um, 11 chapter. And it says, by faith, we understand that the worlds were framed. By faith, we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God. So that the things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. So in other words, we're coming from the standpoint that the world was framed by the word, the word of God. But also we're coming from the we're looking at it from a different way that our worlds have been framed by the negative words we spoke and by the negative thoughts that we thought in our mind. I always tell the people in John 1, in the beginning was the word. The word was with God. Blessings to you, woman of God. The word was with God. Um, and so you got to understand that even your thoughts are spirits. So even if you're thinking negative thoughts, guess what? Those are demonic spirits that's on the inside of your mind. If you always, the Bible says, it's not what the fact, it's not what's, um, uh, it's not what comes, it's what comes out of a man is what defiles him. So when you begin to speak, that's the indication of the words of what kind of spirit that's on the inside of you. And so when we're always talking mean, we're always talking hateful, we always slandering. We got to understand we're dealing with some unclean spirits on the inside of us. And so we got to begin to understand good morning good morning we got to begin to understand that we got to take ownership for what's on the inside of us you got to understand that your body is a shell why am i doing this because i don't want you to just think this is just a prayer you got to understand that this is your house just like in the natural we clean up our natural house you it's your responsibility to keep this house clean and a lot of times we think just because we go to church and we read the bible we assume that our house is clean and your house is not clean because when you if you you be honest with yourself if you pay attention to your thoughts if you pay attention with the words that you speak out of your mouth that's a real indication of what's really living on the inside of your house and so if we're going to be free we got to begin to be honest with ourselves so even as we begin to pray and holy spirit begin to start dealing with you when you start backing up, when you start acting like, oh, that ain't me, and when you're, 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 you're fighting, you're moving, you're getting antsy, you're, you're working against Holy Spirit. In other words, you're telling him, I don't want to be free. In other words, you're telling him, I don't want to be delivered. This is where, this is where you got to want to be free. This is where, this is not where I'm coming to make you feel good. I'm trying to help you to be free and you got to work with them. I always tell people deliverance. Sometimes you don't see anything. You may just feel a release. You may start crying. You may start yawning. You may pass gas. Some people do different things, but I like to tell people, but if you find yourself, let me get off this line, and your stomach start hurt, that's those unclean spirits that the Spirit of God is dealing with on the inside of you, so you need to know what is taking place. You need to understand that God want to deal with you, but he needs you to be willing to say, you know what, come out. So as I begin to start praying, that, that's right, woman of God, I don't know about you. I, I'm still like, Lord, deliver me. Deal with me on this issue here. We got to begin to fight for our deliverance. That's why it's called deliver me from me. It's where you are fighting for you. A lot of times we, we, this is the time not for you waiting on me to call your name. This ain't that type of show. This is where you saying, God, I want you because I'm tired of me. You got to be tired of yourself and you got to be tired of how you are thinking, what you're speaking and what your life looks like. Amen. And so again, we're coming from Hebrews 11 chapter. The, um, we understand by faith um, the worlds were framed by the word of God, but our words, our worlds were framed by the negative words we spoke and the negative thoughts we thought about ourselves. So we're going to come up against demonic front. We come, we're breaking demonic frames. Just imagine a picture frame, and you know how you break it. So our words have. So if you felt you was ugly, that's a frame you put around yourself. If you felt like you weren't good enough, that's a frame how you frame your world. And so what we're doing is we're believing God to break these frames that we. 
we have spoke about ourselves, that we thought about ourselves, where we allow other people to speak over us. We're breaking demonic frames. So, oh, gracious and heavenly Father, Lord, we want to say thank you for who you are. Father, we want to thank you for you being our God. Thank you, oh God, for giving us the opportunity to come together, oh God. Lord God, we thank you, oh God, for releasing, Lord God, your angels. We thank you, oh God, for the blood of Jesus, oh God, uh, um, above the place, up under the place, in the walls, in the floors, everywhere where your people may be that may be listening to this, this broadcast. Father, we thank you, oh God, that we, we worship you and we give you glory. We give you honor. We thank you for who you are. Father, we thank you for there's no one like you, oh Lord. Father, we thank you, oh God, that we are surrendering all unto you. Oh Father, we thank you that we are casting our cares upon you because you told us to cast our cares upon you because you care for us. Oh Father, we just thank you, oh God, for you are sovereign. You are a mighty God. Oh Father, we glorify you. We thank you, oh God, for you are the King of all kings. You are the Lord of all lords and we magnify you. We glorify you. Oh Father, you are our strong tower. Oh God, you are our uh, battle axe. Oh Father, we thank you right now, oh God, for you being Jehovah Rapha, the Lord, our healer. Oh Father, we thank you for you being our Savior. We thank you for you being Lord God, our Prince of Peace. Oh Father, we thank you, oh God, and we come in the spirit of expectation. Oh Father, that we begin to, Lord God, say it's me standing in the need of prayer. Oh Father, I ask you everything that we put on the shelf, everything that we that we have going on in our lives, that even in our mind, in our soul, in our subconscious mind, in our emotions, Father, we thank you where we have put things on the shelf. For Holy Spirit, we take things off the shelf, and Father, we thank you that we're bringing them to the forefront. Father, we're giving you permission to deal with us. Oh, Father, we thank you right now, oh God, that we begin to repent on behalf of our sins, oh Father, sins of knowing and unknown. Oh, Father, we ask you to give us, come on, even though I'm talking, I need you to be talking at home. Oh, Father, I ask you to forgive me, oh Father, even things, Lord God, that I've been thinking that I should have never thought of. Father, forgive me, oh God, for speaking words out of my mouth that I know I shouldn't have even spoke. Father, even I ask you to deal with me in my heart. Father, I ask you to give me clean hands and a pure heart. I ask you to wash me, oh Lord. I ask you to cleanse me, cover me with your precious blood. Oh Father, we thank you that we begin to arrest every unclean spirit right now in the name of Jesus, with the blood of Jesus. Oh Father, we we thank you that these demonic spirits has to submit to the blood of Jesus. They have to submit at your feet. Oh, Father, we thank you, oh God, that we're covering our minds. We're covering our soul. We're covering our spirits. We're covering our bodies with the blood of Jesus. And Father, we thank you right now, oh God, for there's a washing. We thank you that there's a cleansing taking place in the name of Jesus. Oh, Father, we thank you, oh God, that you're helping us. You're giving us the grace and giving us the strength, oh God, to face our fears, things about ourselves that we didn't want to deal with. Father, we thank you, oh God, that you've given us the strength. You're giving us the grace right now in the name of Jesus that we're working with you, Holy Spirit. Oh, Father, we're working with you, oh God, to deal with us. I hear God say, I'm bringing some things on your mind. Come on, even some things on your mind. Father, I thank you right now, oh God, that we begin to take authority over all second heaven activity right now in the name of Jesus where the enemy have come in, oh Father, to try to take over our thoughts. Oh, Father, we bind up all second and heaven activity right now in the name of Jesus. Oh, Father, we silence the voice of the enemy. Oh, Father, we begin to break those demonic frames, those things that how we see our life, see our life that we are a failure, that we're not going to make it. It's too hard. I'm afraid. I'm afraid of what's going on in these things in this world. I don't want to die. I don't want to lose my home. I don't want to lose my family. I don't want to lose my job. I don't want to lose my children or the, the, the cares of the world that's on man's shoulder. Oh, Father, we pray right now. Oh, Father, we bind and we break off every false prop, every false prop. Oh, Father, having our mind where we put our eyes on our jobs, where we put our eyes on people, where we put our eyes on the church and we didn't put our eyes on you. Oh, Father, we ask you to forgive us right now in the name of Jesus for what we have sinned against you. Forgive us, oh, Father, where we depended more on the pastor than we depended on you. Oh, Father, we tear down these idols. Come on here. I hear the Holy Ghost say, tear down these idols. Tear down these idols that we 
we have built up, where we have made people up here, where we want to call our leaders for everything, and we looked at them like they gods, where in the name of Jesus, Father, forgive us, where we looked at our job like our job was our God because we had everything going on, and we trusted in our job, and we didn't trust in you. Oh, Father, we begin to repent right now in the name of Jesus. Oh, we silence that spirit of worry, worryation, and stress. We command you to come out the house right now in the name of Jesus. We begin to arrest you. We begin to break your power. We command you to get out the house in the name of Jesus. No longer will we be a people that we sit up there and we begin to ponder and we'll ponder about the word of how we going to make it, how we going to pay our bills, how I'm going to take care of my children, how I'm going to take care of my family. I'm going to take care of myself. We brine up these false props and we cast you down. That spirit of worry, worrying about tomorrow, worrying about next week, worried about next year. Devil, you're a liar. God, we are, the God is a God that he said, trust in the Lord with all our heart and lean not to your own understanding. He said, in all your ways, acknowledge me. Come on. This is where you got to acknowledge him. You got to say, God, forgive me, oh, Father, for I've been trusting in man. I've been trusting in one man. I've been trusting in Lord God. Lord God, what? I can do. Come on here, because sometimes we became a God. Come on, you got to dethrone yourself. God say, this is the time you got to lift me up. You got to lift me up. You got to make me big. You got to make me big in your life. How do I make him big? By you speaking it. You got to begin to say, God, I make you big. No longer will I sit up there and focus on what I got to do, but God, I focus on you. No longer will I try to figure things out that you told, you didn't tell me to figure it out. You told me to trust you. Come on here. He said, trust in the Lord. He said, and lean not to your own understanding. Come on, you may not know how he going to do it, but then you say, Lord, show me the way. Show me what it is that you're going to do. Show me the direction, oh God. Father, I thank you for the provision. I thank you for you being Jehovah, uh, 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 Jireh, the Lord that provides for your people. Father, but I thank you right now, oh God, for you begin to heal. Heal that worry in the name of Jesus. Worrying about tomorrow. Worrying about things in the name of Jesus. Come on here. Release it off your shoulder. Come on here, because I even feel somebody been having some chest pains up here here even just because of stress. Come on here, begin to let it go. Let it go. Come on, you got to begin to understand. Holy Spirit, it, it, this is a walk of faith. I told you even in Hebrews um, 11 and 3, it says, by faith, God framed the worlds. In other words, he spoke it and then it manifests. When you look at Genesis um, 1, he said, in the beginning was the word. The word was with God and the word was God. You got to understand, you got to speak what you don't see. You got to begin to speak and believe that know that our God is faithful. Our God is a good father that takes care of his children. And he needs you to understand that there's no need for you to worry. There's no need for you to stress. Come on here. Even your fears of fears of how am I going to make it? Your fears of I don't like being by myself. Your fears of even I, I don't know. I don't know about my job. I don't know about my car. I don't know about my home. See, these are cares. These are tactics of the enemy. This is where the world have released fear. People have been speaking all kind of fear. I come up against that spirit of anxiety. Come on here. You being quick to make decisions. You just making decisions. You're not even thinking about it. You just being anxious. God said, be not anxious for anything. Come on. We cast down every spirit of being anxious, anxious, making decisions, anxious, just want to do something. You got to begin to understand that that's a spirit on the inside of you. And that spirit did not come from God. We got to know what spirits are from God and what spirits are not from God. And God never told us to be anxious. Anxious. This is what you got to begin to understand. So when you begin to be a busy body, I bind up that spirit of the busy body spirit. You putting your hand in this and that. You talking about this and that. You listen to this and that. And all this stuff got you confused. You got to begin to sit down and you got to begin to allow the spirit of God to deal with you. You got to begin to allow the spirit of God to talk to you. So we come up against that business where your mind and your thoughts are over here and over there. I come up against that spirit of insanity. Every spirit of insanity go right now in the name of Jesus. We bind up every mind binding and every mind blinding spirit. Even somebody been having tension around their head. We come up against the tension. We come up against the migraine headaches right now in the name of Jesus. We command you to go. We command you headaches and you headaches 
and pain and the tension, even somebody having pain in the back of their neck. I command you to go right now in the name of Jesus. We release the fire of God against you. We command you to loose God's people right now in the name of Jesus. Go, go, go right now in the name of Jesus. I command that spirit of pain. I command it to go. That spirit of pain, that spirit of tension. We break that demonic headache right now in the name of Jesus. We break the pressure. We break the pressure right now in the name of Jesus. That we come against you right now in the name of Jesus. You got to go. Pain, you got to go. We take authority over every spirit of infirmity, every spirit of pain, every spirit of disease. We command you to go right now in the name of Jesus. We break off every spirit of restriction. We break off every spirit of limitation right now. Go right now in Jesus name. We break off these restrictions. We break off those limitations off of God's people in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you right now, oh God, for the floodgates of the Holy Spirit flowing. We thank you, oh Lord, for you releasing your healing power. We thank you, oh God, for you releasing healing to your people right now in the name of Jesus. Even I come up against high blood pressure because of the pain, high blood pressure because of the stress, high blood pressure. Even we break those generational curses. We can break those generational voices that speak to you that you're going to die how mama died. You're going to die how people in your family die. We come up against premature death. We come up against those spirits right now in the name of Jesus. We command you to go. We command you get out. Every spirit of high blood pressure. Every spirit right now of heart disease. We command you to go right now in the name of Jesus. Every every spirit that want the heart to, to, to miss, to skip a beat. I command and I speak to your heart and I command it to be regulated. I hear God say even even those that are dealing with their heart issues, God said that you got to forgive. You got to forgive. You got to forgive. Heart issues. You got to let go certain situations, certain circumstances. We got to understand those are the voices that you hear in your mind. Even while I'm praying, whatever that's on your mind, that's what it is that Holy Spirit want to deal with. And that's when you got to begin to say, Lord, I let it go. I hear somebody say, but you don't know what they did. You don't know what they said. You're right. I don't know, but God. God knows. We got to begin to understand that God, that God is the only one who can take your pain away. God is the only one who can deliver you. I break the power even of those frames. I break them demonic frames. I break them images, those images where you curse yourself. I break those images. You, I hear God say, you got to break agreement for you agree with the sickness. You agree with the heart issues. You agree. You agree with the enemy. You got to understand the Bible, the spiritual law say, how can two walk together unless they agree. You got to be willing to let things go. Why do you let things go? You let things go because God said, I forgave you. And he said, not through your sin into the sea of forgiveness. So if he throw your sin into the sea of forgiveness, guess what? If you're created in the likeness and image of him, and if you're part of his kingdom, guess what? You got to begin to throw those sins or what they did. You got to throw it into the sea of forgiveness. Am I saying that you're supposed to take somebody abuse? No. But what I'm saying is you got to forgive them and you got to love them and you got to begin to understand forgiveness is letting it go forgiveness is not keep talking about it. a lot of times we keep talking about situations and that's the indication that you have not let it go a lot of times if it's always on your mind that's you not wanting to let it go and we got to begin to understand that if you want to go further in the things of God if you want to move on guess what you're not going to go forward if you keep holding on because you're playing God you're playing God like you're the judge because you want that person to suffer. And see, and we talked about that last week. That's how you begin to get evil because you mad and you frustrated and you start talking about what they did and what they said. And then we begin to now start speaking word curses out of our mouths. Then now you open up the door to witchcraft. Now you open up the door to being evil. See, that's what that spirit of unforgiveness does. It will make you cross over into a whole nother realm. And that's why we got to be quick to forgive because you got to understand forgiveness isn't for them. Forgiveness is for you because God lives in your house. And a lot of times we do not understand when you do not forgive a person, guess what? You are hindering your blessings. You are stopping God from blessing you the way that he wants to. He's not going to break the law just because you don't 
they hurt you, you got to begin to now allow the blood of Jesus to touch those areas. And when the, what do the blood of Jesus does when it touch those areas? What it does is it heals those areas as if it never happened. And you got to begin to say, I forgive them by faith. Even the pain that they did, that they hurt me. Lord, I give it to you by faith. Lord, I choose to let it go. No longer will I hold on to what they did. No longer would I carry the memory. No longer would I allow somebody to keep bringing it up to me, but I choose to let it go as if it never happened. So when the devil try to bring it to your mind, blessings, woman of God, when the devil try to bring it to your mind, you tell them, no, I choose to forgive them. No, I choose to let it go. Because a lot of times Pastor Juliet did an awesome uh, 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 broadcast with it about forgiveness, because a lot of times we think that we have forgiven a person. But every time you see them, then you, you, you was happy, but you saw them and then now you're frowning. It don't mess up your day. No, because you still hold on forgiveness. You got to understand that, that if you're going to walk in deliverance, hear me. If you want to walk free, you gonna have to let those people go. You gotta let go of your past. See, that's why Lot wife she turned to a pillar of salt because she kept looking back. And see, a lot of times we're missing the blessings what God has for us because we're still trying to hold on to what people did. We're trying to hold on. We reminding ourselves because the devil telling you. See, I'm talking about them voices. You see, you you, you gotta watch them because you know what they did. You know what they said to you. No, 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 devil, you a liar. I let them go. The Bible say, vengeance is mine, says the Lord. God ain't never told you to keep t- uh, tab of what they did. God ain't never told you to watch them. God told you to forgive them and to let it go and you move on with your life and you let them move on with their lives. We got to stop trying to play God and we got to let Holy Spirit do what he need to do. So a lot of times, this is why a lot of sickness and things are on our bodies, especially when you're dealing with a, 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 a lot of uh, um um. Lord David, you a liar. When you're dealing with a lot of, um, when you're dealing with rejection, that's dealing with a lot of issues of unforgiveness. When you're dealing with a lot of autoimmune, you, uh, people with fibromyalgia, you got to begin to understand, we bring these d- demonic spirits. I told you, so if you're, if you're thinking negative thoughts, you're telling those demons, here I am. So unforgiveness, so you got somebody and you won't let them go. Unforgiveness, it's automatically coming to your house. You talking to your friend, you always talking about, they did this, they did that. That spirit is going to come. It's automatically going to come in your house. And how when they come to your house, them demons going to express themselves. That spirit of anger. So when you sit up there, you start talking about them, you get mad. That spirit of anger show up. Then now you mad, you slamming doors. Now you being mean, you acting a fool. See, this is where you got to understand, demons want to express themselves in that express themselves by the thoughts that the thought whatever that you're thinking about those demons want to show you that they live on the inside of you and this is why God said we got to cast the demons out your house you got to cast out these voices you got to cast out the thoughts so even you got to say Lord I renounce my right to operate in unforgiveness I choose to forgive Bobby I choose to forgive John I choose to give forgive Mary I choose to forgive Michael and every spirit of unforgiveness you got to go I I choose to forgive what they did to me. I choose to forgive what they said to me. Come on here. I choose. I let it go. I let it go. Even in my past. Come on, tell my past. I divorce you. I divorce the hurt. I divorce the pain. I divorce what you did to me. I command you to get out. Come on, command it to get out. Come on here. Some of y'all may be feeling nauseated on your stomach. Lay hands on your stomach and tell the spirit to go. You unclean spirit, you got to loose me. Come on here. Some of us are mad at even in our, these are childhood issues. Some of this stuff is mad at mama, mad at daddy, and even if some of these people have been deceased, guess what? Mama, I let you go. I choose to let you go. I call mama spirit out of me. See, this is where you got to begin to be proactive and you got to now, you got to begin to speak it out your mouth. I let go mama. Mama, it's always been on my mind what mama did. It's always been on my mind what daddy did. I let it go. I command you to get out of my house. I command you to get out of my mind. I command you to get out of my soul. I command you to get out of my emotions. Come on here. Command these demonic spirits. Come on, say, I break these demonic frames, these pictures, these images. Come on here. How I saw myself. Come on here. I saw myself as a failure. I saw myself that I ain't good enough. I saw myself. Why me? Why I got to go through this? Break them demonic frames. You got to break them. You can't wait for nobody to break it off of you. You break it. You don't like what you see. You don't like how your life feels. You got to break it. 
You come on, you it's just like you breaking a picture frame. Break it. Break them lies. Come on, say, I break these lies. I break every demonic trigger. Every time we go to a certain place in life, it seems like the enemy come. It seems like things are getting better. As times things get better, something happens. I come up against them demonic uh, time restraints. I come up against them demonic curses. We begin to break them off our lives. We break off these demonic anniversary periods, these demonic birthdays. We break them right now in the name of Jesus. Every time we try to go forth in life, it's something to try to take to bring us back. We break these demonic uh, rubber bands. We break your power right now in the name of Jesus. We come up against that spirit of the yo-yo up the day, down the mile. We break it. We come. We, we we thank you, Father, for a spirit of consistency. We thank you that we are being consistent in you. We thank you that every time somebody remind us of what somebody did, Father, we break them demonic triggers and we apply the blood of Jesus. Father, we thank you right now that these demonic triggers will not take us back. We thank you that we are recognizing what people did. We are recognizing what they said. We recognizing the certain smell that familiar spell go right now in the name of Jesus. That familiar memory go right. Now, in the name of Jesus, I command you to go. Come on here. Every time you smell that cologne, it take you back to that uh, incident. Come on. We break that. We break the power of that familiar spirit. Go right now in the name of Jesus. Come on. We got to break these demonic soul ties. Come on here with people. Even when, if they on your mind, you got to uproot them. Come on here. Where they have got seed in your house. Come on here. I uproot the seed and I command you to get out of my house. You got to go. You got to get out of my mind. You got to get out of my memory. Come on here. You got to fight. Come on here. You will not hold me back. Come on here. You got to begin to say, uh-uh. I break them demonic chains. Come on here. Well, you've been feeling like a slave. You've been feeling like you in bondage to this person. Well, you wake up thinking about it. You go to bed thinking, about it. I break that demonic chain. I break that demon that, 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 that spirit of Pharaoh. Come on. We come up against every spirit of Pharaoh. Every spirit that come to oppress us. Every spirit that come to suppress us. We command you to loose us and let us go. Every spirit of Pharaoh come out. Come out right now in the name of Jesus, every spirit of Pharaoh, every spirit of oppression, every spirit that come to oppress us, every spirit that come to suppress us, every spirit that want to make us feel sad, to make us feel down, to make us feel like we can't go forward, that spirit of tiredness, come on here, we break every spirit of fatigue, I keep saying I'm tired, I hear the Holy Ghost say, break them words, stop saying I'm tired, come on here, you're, you're coming into agreement with tired, I break that off your mindset, I break that off your thought process that uh, of, of being tired, I'm so tired of going through. I'm so tired of looking at this. Break them words in the name of Jesus. We come up against those spirits of, of familiarity that we being so familiar that we just speak curses upon ourselves. That spirit of self sabotaging that we sabotage ourselves. We keep going back doing the same thing. We keep rehearsing the same, going around them demonic cycles. We break those demonic cycles. The same thing what happened last year this time. We break it. It will not happen. Now, now another year. We lay the axe to the root. We break this demonic frame right now in the name of Jesus. No longer will you bring that, 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 that those things from the past back to our lives. No longer will you keep playing this. We, we bind and we tap, we break that demonic record. They're trying to play it over and over where well, we rehearse the same thing over and over in our mind. We break it right now in the name of Jesus where well, we have become obsessed with, 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 with being in bondage. We break your power. You spirit of obsession. We command you to go where well, you obsessing over what's going on you obsessing with this. You obsessing yourself of, uh, into confusion. You obsessing about what's going on with you. You just obsessed with being a victim. I break off that victim mentality. I break it up off of you in the name of Jesus. I begin to speak to the warrior. Come on, warriors. We are warriors in the army of the Lord. Come on here. We release the blood of Jesus. Father, we thank you right now. Father, I pray that you begin to heal our eyes. Oh, Father, when we walked in the spirit of blindness, we bind up every spirit of fantasy. We bind up every spirit of it escape. We come up against that spirit of lust. We cast out lust. Lust of the flesh. Lust of the eyes. We come, we dealing with that spirit of lust. We dealing with that spirit of fantasy where we want to escape our problems. We want to escape our issues where we don't want to deal with it. Come on, we take that stuff off the shelf. We take them, we take them situations off the shelf. And no, we dealing with you today. No, you got to come out. You got to come out. Lust, come out right now in the name of Jesus. Lust of the eyes. Come out. Come out that spirit of fantasy. We tell that demonic 
world, that false world that we have built up in our mind that ain't true. Come on here. The devil told you that you ain't going to make it. The devil told you it ain't going to get better. That spirit, that's right. Spiritual blindness. We call out that spiritual blindness where your eyes have been blind. You've been in these demonic cycles and these demonic worlds. We break them right now in the name of Jesus. We command you to get out right now in the name of Jesus. We break these false frames, these frames that's been on our eyes like glasses. We break them right now in the name of Jesus. Even when you've been connected to people that want to blind you, we break them witchcraft words, even seeds that's been planted on the inside of us. We uproot you and we command you to die by fire, die by fire in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Lord, for you healing our eyes in the name of Jesus. We apply the salve of the blood of Jesus. Oh, Father, we release the spirit of truth. I release the spirit of truth over your eyes. He said the truth shall make you free. We break every lie. We break the lies, the lies of the flesh, the lies of what you want, the lies of what you think you need. We break them lies. We come up against that spirit of the liar, that spirit of the manipulator. We call that spirit out of us in the name of Jesus. Come out, you spirit of the liar. You spirit of the liar. Come on, lying about situation. How you doing? Oh, I'm good. Come out, you lying devil. Come out right now. We see you. We see you come out right now in the name of Jesus. Coming up with these false imaginations. Come out. Come out right now. The blood of Jesus is against you. The blood of Jesus is against you and you got to go. Your season is up. You have your eviction notice. You got your papers. You got to pack your bags and you got to get up out the house. No longer can you stay here. No longer can you. you you're not welcome here. And so therefore you cannot control the house. Come on, you! I need y'all to fight. I need you to open up your mouth and you got to say something. Come on here because I feel I feel like the Spirit of God that there's a breakthrough, but you got to begin to work with the Holy Spirit. You got to begin to tell the devil, no, you're going to lose me. No, you're going to leave the house. No, 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 no. You spirit, uh -uh. you spirit of anxiety, go. Go right now in the name of Jesus. Come on here. I break the spirit of fear. Talking about fear of demons, fear of unclean spirits. Guess what? The, we break that image right now. That's a, We break that demonic frame to try to uh, 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 make you afraid. Talk about a, 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 a devil. No, th that's the tactic of the enemy because he don't want to come out. He don't want to come out, but he's a liar. He's coming out today. No, you got to come out. You got to tell that devil this is my house. Come on here. Because if you don't take authority over the devil in this house right here, if you don't take authority with the blood of Jesus, you got to understand that devil is going to run you rapid. And it's his job to steal, kill, and to destroy. And so now you got to open up your mouth and you got to tell the devil, you got to get out of my house. You're not going to make me afraid because God did not give me that spirit. Come on here. You spirit of fear. Uh, 2 Timothy 1 and 7. God did not give me the spirit of fear, but of love and power. And you got to understand he has given me power. Come on here. You got the power of the greater one on the inside of you. And you got to believe and you got to begin to tell that thought. I pull you down. The Bible said we pull down every wicked imagination and every thought that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. So you got to pull down these lies. You got to pull down the devil telling you afraid. No, I'm not afraid. I need you to open up your mouth and say, no, I'm not afraid. I'm going to make it. I'm coming out of this. Come on here. That's right. You got to talk your way out of this. You got to speak. Come on here. The Bible say in Proverbs 18 and 21, death and life lies in the power of your tongue. Come on here. Tell the devil, I'm not a victim anymore. I divorce you. You spirit of the victim. You got to go. You spirit of insanity. You got to go. Come on here. Say my mind belongs to the Lord. Come on. I dare you to say my mind belongs to the Lord. So you got to silence these voices. You got to tell the devil, you got to get out of my mind. I come up against them thoughts of even, of being lied on. Come on here, or even that spirit of rejection. Come on, we got to deal with that spirit of rejection. Come on here, why they pushing me away? Why they why they got an issue with me? Only, no, 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 we break them demonic lies. Rejection, you got to go. That spirit of self-rejection. Come on here, you got to fight and tell that devil, you got to loose me, and you got to let me go. Come on here. God wants you free. God don't want you to ride here. You paranoid. You, you think of somebody trying to hurt you. Get that spirit of rejection out of you. Command that spirit of rejection. Go. That self, that spirit of self-rejection. Come on here. That spirit came in through the womb because sometimes our mothers, when they was pregnant, 
They didn't want any more children or uh, for whatever reason. And that means that spirit of rejection came in through the baby. And uh, sometimes we was that baby. And so you got to deal with that spirit of rejection. Come on here. You got to begin to say, I divorce you. You spirit of rejection, you got to go. You spirit of self-rejection, you got to go. You spirit, come on here. That's right, Brittany. My mind belongs to the Lord. Come on here. I need you to fight. Come on here. Even if I come up against every spirit, every mind-binding spirit that want to block your spirit, man, from here that's trying to block your emotions. I unblock you right now in the name of Jesus. I unblock. I unblock you right now in the name of Jesus. Where you trying to make you think, well, I don't feel nothing. Devil, you a liar. We come against you right now. You every spirit of distractions. I come against you. Hey, distractions, you got to go by the power of the blood of Jesus. I command you to get out right now for Jesus is Lord in this house. Jesus is Lord in this house and we're not going around the same circle. We're not going around the same cycle. Come on here. I don't know about you, but I told the devil, you're not going to have me going around the same circle. I laid an X to the root and it stops today. See, you got to tell the devil, it stops today. No longer will these voices rule and reign. You got to begin to pull them down. How do you pull them down? Just like I'm saying, I pull down the voices that's telling me that I can't do it. I pull down the voice. Even God said, we got to deal with the voices that you, that we've been blaming other people. Come on. You got to begin to understand. You got to take responsibility for your house because if a devil came in it's because you gave him a right to come in so now you got to say Lord forgive me for blaming other people forgive me Lord for blaming other people this is the way my life is because of them uh uh God said you got to take responsibility for your actions because you had a part to play in it too I got to renounce my right to operate you know from from blaming other people Lord I take responsibility I call out that spirit of blame I call out that spirit of manipulation well we want to manipulate other people. We want people to feel bad because they hurt us and we want to play the victim and we want to play like this is what's wrong because I like the attention. I come up against that spirit of the hurt little girl. I come up against that spirit of the hurt little boy. Come on here where well, we want to act like, look kid, I ain't your friend no more. I want to play these little children game. Uh-uh. God said, uh-uh. No, 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 no. The Holy Ghost is here. No, it's your eviction time. No, we coming to evict the hurt little boy. We coming to evict the hurt little girl. Come on, command them to get out your house. You got to command the hurt little boy and the hurt little girl to get out your house. What is the hurt little boy and the hurt little girl? Because you don't like how your situation is. And it's easy for you to blame somebody. So get what little children do. I had that spirit bad. Blaming everybody. Instead of me owning up and instead of me growing up. I, that's a spirit of arrested development. I, I break your power being stuck at a childhood, being stuck because this is what you want, having temper tantrums. We break them demonic temper tantrums. We break them up. We give you your eviction notice and you got to go. Every spirit of arrested development, we command you to go. Even going back to them childhood issues, he's bringing some stuff on your mind. That Holy Spirit, we release the fire of God to this area. Even though, Father, we was hurt at. Oh, Father, we was a uh, Bruce said, oh, Father, we felt like we had a right. Oh, Father, we ask you to forgive us, oh, Father, and we choose to forgive those people who have hurt us. And, Father, we thank you, oh, Father, that we commanded little girl to pack her bags. We command the hurt little boy to pack his bags, and you got to go. You got to go right now in the name of Jesus. Come on here. You got to go. Come on here. You spirit of Jezebel. You spirit where you want to control everything. Come on. Can I tell you, Jezebel is not a woman. It's a spirit where you feel like you got to control. Control. I know what I'm doing. I know what's best for somebody else. No, you spirit of Jezebel where nobody can't tell you nothing. Nobody can't correct you. Nobody can't give you counsel because you act like you know what you're doing. We drive you out the house. We command you to get out. You get out, you spirit of Jezebel. We command you to get out right now in the name of Jesus. Come on here because sometimes we feel like we Je Jezebel operated in manipulation and domination because we get we, we the only one that know how to control you. We need you to do what we tell tell you to do because we are the only we know what's right devil you're a liar we bind you and we break that false prop we break them lies right now we command you to go and we I, I see the uh, uh, the other half in this thing you spirit of Ahab being the counterpart agreeing to what Jezebel saying you know it's wrong but you're agreeing to it anyway we break that that spirit of Ahab we command you to get out right now in the name of Jesus you spirit of Ahab get out we command you to get out of us get out of us in the 
name of Jesus, you spirit of Jezebel, we command you to pack your bags and we command you to go. Come on here. Well, we have came up with a devised plan to destroy. Lord, forgive us right now in the name of Jesus. Forgive us, oh Father. Well, we have thinking that we know what we're doing. And Father, that we're playing God. Father, forgive us, you, the every spirit of, of Luciferian spirit. And Father, want to take the place being a false God. Lord, we begin to repent right now in the name of Jesus. We repent thinking that we know what to do. The Bible say even talk about how, how when Eve and uh, Adam, when they would listen to the snake, they would listen to the serpent, and they were listening to bad decisions. Lord, we repent for the bad decisions. We repent, oh God, for playing like we were God. Thank that we know what to do and we don't know what to do. Lord, forgive us right now in the name of Jesus. We dethrone ourselves. We dethrone ourselves thinking that we know what we're doing and we did not. We repent for the bad decision. We repent Lord God for the things that we signed off that was okay and it wasn't okay. Father, we taking ownership. We break these lies. Come on, I need you to break these demonic frames. We need you to break these. Come on here. Even with these demonic spirits trying to hide in your thoughts. No, I command you to get out right now. I apply the blood of Jesus even over our mind, every spirit of insanity, every spirit that would try to come up against your memory, to try to make you think that you forgetting things, you spirit of forgiveness, devil, I see you, I command you to go right now in the name of Jesus, you know, make you think, I got all time, I got dementia, devil, you a liar, we even break them words that we said, we even break them words that we thought in our mind, we come against you right now in the name of Jesus, get out, get out right now in the name of Jesus, we command you to lose your hold, we command you to pack your bags and go. You cannot stay in this house and think that you're going to live free off of us. In the name of Jesus, we command you to go right now in the name of Jesus. We come up against every spirit, every wicked imagination where we thought wickedly about others. Come on here. We thought wickedly. People who have hurted us, people who wounded us, people who left us, people who did us wrong and we said, I hope something bad will happen to them. I hope this. You got to rep- pit because that was witchcraft. You got to repent and say, Lord, forgive us. I command that spirit of witchcraft to go. And the, the counterpart to that is rebellion because rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft. Lord, we repent for the rebellion. We cast out every spirit of rebellion right now in the name of Jesus. We command you to go. Every spirit of rebellion that when we heard the truth but we turned our head, we heard the truth and we rejected Holy Spirit. Father, forgive us or we rejected you in the name of Jesus. Forgive Forgive us for becoming an enemy to the cross. Forgive us for coming an enemy to you, O Lord. Forgive us, O God, for operating in witchcraft. Forgive us, O Father, for praying witchcraft prayers from out of the wrong spirit. Get them, God. Get them, God. Forgive us right now in the name of Jesus. Forgive us, O Father, for wanting to punish people. For you didn't punish us when we did wrong, that you gave us the opportunity to get right. Forgive us, O Father, for wanting to hold other people. Lord God, to something that we don't want to be holding to those same standards. Forgive us, oh God, in the name of Jesus. Oh God, when we spoke things out of our mouths, oh Father, when we spoke curses out of our mouths out against other people because they did us wrong. Forgive us, oh Father, for not thinking that you you the one that you that, that you the one can handle the situation. Forgive us, oh Father, for trying to take the situation into our own hands and not allowing you to be God. Oh Father, we begin to pray right now in the name of Jesus. And we say, Father, forgive us for we have sinned against you. Oh, Father, we ask you not to leave us. We ask you, Holy Spirit, for not, for you not to leave this house. Holy Spirit, we ask you to come back into this house. Oh, Father, forgive us. Oh, Father, well, we've been murmuring and complaining. We've been complaining because of what we're going through or because we don't have it like somebody else. Forgive us, oh, Father, for coveting what another man has. Forgive us, oh, Father, for comparing ourselves to other people. Forgive us, oh, Father, for looking at what you're doing with other people. And, and being angry because we feel like you didn't do it for us. Father, forgive us right now in the name of Jesus. For Father, for you have been taking care of us. You have been supplying all our needs. And Father, forgive us for when we release these words in the atmosphere. We release these words in our thoughts. Oh, Father, comparing. Lord God, uh, 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 wanting you to do what we want you to do. Father, forgive us right now in the name of Jesus for stepping out of our place. That Father, we ask you to forgive us that we come back, Lord God, after 
as a child. Father, we renounce our right to operate in that spirit of pride. In the name of Jesus. Oh, Father, forgive us for being prideful. Forgive us, oh, Father, when you was trying to deal with us, but we chose not to listen. We chose to point the finger at somebody else. Forgive us, oh, Father, when we telling other people what to do when we don't even do it our own selves. Forgive us, oh, Father, for being, Lord God, a, a hypocrite. Forgive us, oh, Father, for being hypocrisy. Oh, Father, in the name of Jesus, we come up against that, that, that every spirit of religious, being religious, every religious demon, we cast you out. Being religious, we know how to shout, we know to dance, we know the tongue, but Father, that we don't have no conviction. Father, we pray back for conviction to come back in, conviction to come back in the house. We pray for the fear of God to come back into the house, that Father, we would not entertain demonic thoughts. We would not just speak negative words out of our mouths. Forgive us, oh Father, for turning on people, oh Father, because they didn't do what we want them to do. Forgive us right now in the name of Jesus. Forgive us, Lord, when we have gotten out of your will. We break every spirit of shame where we feel ashamed. Devil, you are liar. You ain't finna keep us in bondage. You are liar. We ain't got no reason to feel ashamed because the Bible said he came to set us free. And today, come on here, because I feel freedom. I feel a breaking, breaking through. Father, I thank you right now in the name of Jesus that we would not be ashamed. For you said that you came to set the captives free. You said, Lord God, that those that were sick, you came for those that were sick. And that, Father, we got some issues going on. And, Father, we thank you that you are the only one that can help us. Come on here, open up your mouth. Because when you open up your mouth, angels are coming to help you. Ministering angels are being released to help you. Come on here, open up your mouth. And come on here, say, freedom is my portion. Freedom is my portion. Come on, today I'm walking in freedom. Come on, I'm walking in freedom every day. Come on here, I would not be bound. I would not be bound by witchcraft. I would not be bound by these demonic frames. I would not be bound by these negative thoughts, but I break them off my mind. I break them off my soul. I break them up off my name. Come on here, I break off religion. I break off tradition in the name of Jesus. Well, I feel like that ain't the way I pray. God, the devil is a liar. We break off them false props. We break off them false images to tell you who you not. Come on here. The Bible said that David was so radical that he danced over his clothes came out. Come on here. God said this is a season that I'm going to do a new thing. This is a new thing that I'm going to do in you. He said as I set you free he said I'm going to give you a newness. I don't know about you but I smell like I smell newness. I, I, I see Psalm 43. He said behold I'm doing a new thing. You got to understand even as he doing this new thing in you. God said there's going to be some changes that I'm going to make in your life. He said there are even going to be some some people, some situations. He said, even there's some things that you got to let go. He said, there's some things that don't mean you any good. And he said, Scott, sometimes, sometimes people want to keep us in bondage and they want us to stay in that place. And saying, God said, uh-uh, this is a season that where I'm taking you, you can't take everybody with you. You got to begin to understand as I begin to deliver you that you can't take, you can't take people that want to be in bondage with you because you want to be free, but they want to talk about the old time. They want to talk about what we did. And God said, "Uh uh-uh, that's old. I need you to focus on the new. And sometimes you got to begin to say, Lord, I thank you, even Lord God, for the season of even some relationships that God has cut some dead weight. Come on here. You got to allow him to cut those. Does that mean you don't love the people? No. It just means that where God got you going, you got to leave some people behind. And when they ready, they know where you at. But you got to keep striving forward. Because can I tell you, when you're delivered, when you're walking to be free, you got to understand Understand that some people would get mad at you because you are free. I was telling them about Mark five about with legion that even when um, Jesus began to cast the, de- the demons out of legion it talked about how the people in the city how they got mad and they told Jesus to leave they liked it better when legion was howling and streaming and cutting itself they liked it when he was sleeping in a tomb they liked it when he was in bondage they liked it when he was going through but the moment that Jesus set him free and he was sitting like a normal man the people got mad and you got to understand it's the same thing people get mad when you get free. People get mad when they can't frustrate you no more. People get mad when they can't bother you no more. Come on here. This is where you see the person that was getting on your nerve and you say, I love you with the love of the Lord, but I don't see the pain no more. Come on here because I choose not to see the pain. Come on here. Deliverance is about you making a choice. You ain't being fake. No, you walking by faith. I choose not to be mad at you no more. I understand that you are sick. I understand that you need some help, but I understand I'm not going to allow you to keep me 
there. See, a lot of times you got to take your peace back. You got to take your energy back because we've been mad at people. We've been upset at people and it's stopping us from growing because you keep rehearsing what they did. No, 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 no. We bless them. No, we're not going to play no, pray no curses to nobody. We're going to pray for them that God saved their soul, that God delivered them. And we're going to go forth and we're going to walk in this newness because he said, behold, I do a new thing. He said, I do a new thing. You know, and he told me, I, I pulled it up. He said in, in, in verse 40, uh, verse uh, Isaiah 43, verse 2, he said, when you pass through the waters, he said, I will be with you. So even as we go in through this place, even though it looks bad, come on here. He says, you pass through the waters, I will be with you. He said, and through the rivers, he said, they will not overwhelm you. So even when situations and circumstances try to come to you to try to stress you out, say, oh, no, 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 no. I will not be overwhelmed because God told me he's doing a new thing. He told me he with me. So you got to understand. He told us that the waters are going to come. He said, but you got to remember, he said, they cannot overwhelm you. He said, I'm doing a new thing. God said, I just want you to understand that when you're dealing with this stuff that we're dealing with, that you're not going to give it a response. Can I tell you the devil is looking for a response? He's looking for you to get upset. He's looking for you to cry. Come on here. Say today, my last day for crying about spilled milk. No, I'm not going to cry about what you did. I'm not going to cry about what you said. I'm not going to cry about it because this is a new day. I'm not going to allow this to overwhelm me. He said, even when you walk through the fire, you will not be burned or scorched, nor will the flame kindle you. Come on here. He said, in other words, you're going to go through situations that, that was designed to destroy you. But God said, you're going to walk through it. Come on here. You're going to walk through the fire and you won't smell like smoke. Come on here. Help me, Holy Ghost. You got to understand that God said, I allowed this. I allowed this. And I allowed this to train you because you're going to be my modern day deliverers. He said, I'm going to use you to deliver my people. See, isn't that a good God? What the enemy meant for your bad, what the enemy meant to oppress us. God said, I'm going to use it to push you forward. I'm going to use it to take you forward that you're going to help other people. Come on here. So it, uh, that's why when you look at the person that hurt you, bless them. Say, no, God bless you. No, I pray the blessings of the Lord upon you, whatever that you're going through. I pray that the spirit of the Lord meet you there because God said, I am here to do a new thing. So no longer are we going to go back to thinking a negative. Negative. No longer are we going to speak negative and we're not going to let nobody make us go back to that place because God said this is a place that, that's, that's I'm doing a new thing. He said, for I am the Lord, your God. See, God is using this. He's using this to push you forward. You got to understand that you're stronger than what you think you are. That's why we have to let go of these things because we got ministry to do. We got work to do and we can't do ministry. If you got voices, if you got demons in your house, it's just like I always get a church analogy. You got the, the vitamin D milk and you got the, uh, the 2% milk, the 2% milk look like watered down milk. See, when you got demons on the inside of you, your anointing is watered down. But when you get them demonic spirits are cast out of the house, come on here. You you got the doing this power on the inside of you. And so you got to understand that God want to use us. We got work to do. You got to understand we are a couple days from Pentecost. And be, we're going to be believing God that he's going to download us with some power, with some more power to endure, with some more power to help people, with some more power to go through that we can raise. God said, you got to understand this is the day of the church that God is going to use all of us, not just the apostles and the, 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 the people with the titles. He going to use the, the people in the parking lot ministry. He going to use the, the, the people who clean up the church. God is going to use his people. This is why we got to get our house clean. This is why we got to get prepared. He said, because I'm doing a new thing in this hour. Stop looking at it like it's just them. The Lord is using. No, the Lord want to use you. He want to use you to help them people on your job. He want to use you to help the people in your community. He he want to use you to help your family. God said, I'm raising up modern day deliverers. And he said, I am doing something. I'm doing something on the inside of you. And you got to know it. This is why you got to say, Lord, it's me standing in the need of prayer. And father, that I'm trusting you, that father, that every area within me, that father, that you doing a work in me, no longer will we walk around and we turn our head that we are people. We, and we cast out that spirit of offense, being easily offended. 
offensive, that even when we hear the spirit of the living God correcting us, that we're able to take the correction. Come on here. We're able to take the correction and we're quickly to change. We're quickly to change. We're able to take the rebuke and we're quickly to change. Come on here. We coming up against that spirit of stubbornness. And Father, we thank you for a spirit of obedience. That we are obedient to hear what the spirit of the Lord is saying to us. And Father, I thank you, oh God, for what you're doing on the inside of us. I thank you right now for your stirring up the waters. Father, I thank you right now, oh God, that you begin to, to shut those doors where we have cast out these evil spirits, oh Father. And we, we, we cover them with the blood of Jesus. And that Father, we thank you that you will begin to give us a hunger and a desire for you like never before. That Father, that we want to do the work of the ministry. Even I hear God say, even, even to, um, um, elder Leela, I hear God say, even there's coming a new fire, even in your hands. Even when I see your name, there's a new fire coming in your hands. Even I hear God say signs, wonders, and miracles. Signs, wonders, and miracles. God say, I'm stirring up the fire on the inside of your hands. Begin to start reading uh, um, the scriptures on miracles. Signs, wonders, and miracles. God say, I'm just going to lead you and guide you to start going to different places. And when I lead you, and it, it, it's like it's going to be a divine setup. Wherever he's seeing you at, he's going to show you. The, you're just start ministering. And I hear God say, even he's stirring up that spirit of prophecy on the inside of you, that even that he's awakening you even more, that you're even going to have prophetic dreams. I even see you too. Do you dance, Elder um, Leela? I even see you dancing. I don't know if you dancing personally at home, but I just see a dance on you, on the inside of you. God is doing something on the inside of you. He's doing something. I'm telling you, as we going through this deliverance, I'm telling you, I feel such a fire on the inside, even to Elder Wilma. I'm telling you, God is, I'm telling you, I see the power of God standing so strong up in you, woman of God, that even as you begin to talk, that the, the, the that God is going to release a spirit of deliverance, that even as you begin to start teaching and people will start getting deliverance, even as you teach woman of God, God said he's released to such a level of authority over you. God said he's awakening some things on the inside of you. He said, even begin to go back to some things that you wrote down, some things that he prophesied. He said, go back to the places that uh, he, he he told you that he was going to do. He said, I'm awakening some old dreams on the inside of you. He said, as I awaken these dreams, he said, I'm blowing my life on them. He said, I'm commanding those dreams, them, them prophecies to manifest. God said, this is the season that he's going to use you to raise up a remnant of women. I'm telling you, th this thing is on you, um, Elder Wilma. You got to open up your mouth and you got to blow the trumpet because God said it's some things that when you say it, they're going to be able to take it from you because they're going to say, what? Because of who you are, they're going to begin to receive it. So, and they just going to shift. God just going to even deliver people. I mean, I just see it chains falling off their minds. Even I just see what people just like what people minds was locked up. They just going to unlock because God said that I'm giving such a revelation, even that even as you begin to get in that word, I'm going to even show you even deeper revelation and things are just going to click. And that when people talk to you, they're going to say something that just made sense to me. You know, I was praying about that. And, and, and now I got understanding. I got clarity. God said, because I'm going to use you to be a modern day deliverer. I'm telling you, God told me he's building up an army of deliverers. Even the same thing with you too, um, uh, Pastor Juliet. God said even too. He said that you got to work for these women. You got a word for these women. You you gotta you gotta get back um uh uh, uh get back um more to doing your post even uh, uh um even of your journey because even there's some things that you've been going through and God said that you ain't just been going through it on your own he said it's some other women's been going through the same thing that you've been going through he said but he's gonna use you it's like you're gonna be their coach 
uh, why they going through this thing. They're like, I'm going through the same thing. And by you being a woman of God, it's really going to help them because uh, God said, because I put, he said, I put a sword in your mouth. And he said, now, because I put a, a, a the voice of truth in your mouth. And he said, so this is a season that I need you to come forth. This is not the season to back up. This is not the season for the devil to try to tell you, you know, to step back. But God said that this is the season that I got a word I got a word in your mouth and you got to release it. So he says, so start going back to doing your, your videos. And so when he tell you to get up and share something, begin and, and share it because it's going to help his people. Because I do see these women. Uh, um, I, I just see a bunch of women uh, 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 following you because we got to understand that we are each other's keepers. We are uh, iron shopping iron. And that it, it's not about uh, because I'm the apostle. I can't learn. No, I can learn something from a five year old. I can learn something from a baby. You just got to have a teachable spirit. And we got to understand that the more that we allow God to deliver us, the more those old uh, layers fall off of us because God saying, I'm tearing down those layers where we thought that we was this and that because God saying the harvest, we there's a revival taking place. You got to understand before revival hit the church, revival got to hit this house. And you got to understand if revival got, you got to let him do what he got to do in you because it's some things that we thought was church and it ain't church, it's religion. And God's saying that you got to prepare yourself for the harvest. You got to prepare yourself first so the people can recognize him on the inside of you. People on not been to church. People need to come to an experience. They need to experience God when they encounter you. And so God saying, so I'm doing a new work. Even um, Apostle uh, Simmons, I see God say that. He's going to give you something to do at your church. I see uh, y'all standing outside, something going on like with the flags. I don't know if you're doing maybe church outside, but I just see something. And God said, begin to <clears throat> begin to prophesy to the atmosphere, begin to prophesy to the neighborhood, begin to call the people, call the people back home, call them back to the Lord, get in the neighborhood and call the neighborhood back to the Lord. Take authority and command the people to come out of the houses, to come out of the apartments and to come back into the house of the Lord. Because God said that even too, he said that there's something that he's doing with your heart. He said, it's something he's, he's dealing with your heart. He says that I'm giving you the, um, I'm giving you the heart to not saying that you don't love, but I just hear him say he's giving you the heart of love that you're going to be able to love people that uh, was difficult to love, that I'm going to show you how to reach these people that people might have told them you, you did this. You was a bad person or you smell or you, you're a prostitute. But God said, I'm going to give you such a, a, a gift of love. And I, I just see that even God said that even um, even as you giving them love, I just see you clothing them. I see you. you, you I just see God doing things. Uh, it's just like I see you with some clothes and you giving stuff away to the people and the people that they, they receive in the love of God. But God said, I'm going to show you how to love people that have been difficult to love. He said, because there are some things that you um you've been encountering and he said, and just, just to, um, pull on him more as you pull on him more. It's because he's giving you the love to love other people. Sometimes we think about loving other people. We think that it's going to be people that like us. No, that's not love. L love is when you loving somebody who did you wrong. When you love somebody who, who mistreated you and you still being good to them. You still being nice to them and you don't and you really doing it for real because it's on your heart. That's what the genuine. That's what we've been talking about in my church about what, what is love and love is loving those people who hurt you. Now, I'm not going to let you hurt me again, but I can love you. I can be nice to you. I can be kind to you, but I'm not going to let you hurt me, but I can love you. And so this is how we're going to, to uh, receive the harvest is through love. He said love and kindness. Have I drawn thee? And God said that he's just going to show you some things that what you went through, that you had to go through what you were going through. He said, and so uh, as you're doing this, I'm also healing some things within your heart. So God is doing something. You know, I, I thank God for everything that he did. Janice, I hear the same thing. You still on here?
I hear the same thing for you. God said he's going to give you the gift of love. You're going to you're gonna know how to love people that have went through. Because you, as a prophet, you have went through a lot of rejection. You have went through a lot of hardship. And God said, you let those people go. God said, begin to journal, Janice. Begin to journal and write letters. Write letters to the people that hurt you. God said, you got to get all that stuff out. Get it out, get it out, get it out. I don't care if it go back to mama, daddy, grandmama, whoever. He said, get all that stuff out your heart. And then begin to say, Lord, pour your love on me. I receive your love. I receive what you did on the cross. I choose to forgive those people. Guess what they did, but I choose to forgive them. Even when it comes to my mind, no, I give it to the Lord. It's just like when you give a gift to somebody and somebody try to give it back to you. Uh-uh, 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 I ain't taking it back. And so that's the same thing when the devil try to bring it back to your mind. Uh-uh, uh-uh, I gave it to the Lord. And, and that's the Lord said, this is what you got to do, Janice. No, when the enemy try to bring you back to try to make you feel, God said, because I got you, God said, I got you alone right now. He said, because I'm showing you that I'm your husband. And he said, and I love you just like how you are. He said, and as you begin to give your hurts and your pains to me, he said that you're going to, you, you, you're going to feel such a completeness in your heart. Even some of the people that's dead, still write a letter and get that stuff out of your heart. Say what you need to say. Some family members you need to talk to. You need to begin to express how you 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 feel and you got to forgive. And I hear God say it. And, and when you begin to tell them um, how you feel and you forgive them, God say, don't be moved by the responses because sometimes we get up, we 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 think if we tell people you hurt me, you weren't there for me. Sometimes you'll find out people can't give us what they don't know. In other words, if I if, if I don't know how to be a mother if nobody ain't never showed me how to be a mother. I don't know how to be a daughter if nobody ain't never showed me how. And a lot of times we be mad at people because we like well, you did this to me, and, and, and you you're gonna find out that we when you hear their story that they went through the same thing they gave you. And sometimes we upset with people because we mad at them and they can't give us something that they don't have. And God said you got to understand that. He said when man reject you, I love you. And, and that's, that's my favorite scripture. I'm accepted in to be loved. When nobody else loved me, I know he loved me. And so it taught me how to, when I was separated from my husband, it taught me how to love myself. So I would be in, in, in my place by myself and I'd say, I don't like this. I don't like being by myself. You know, and, and God saying, but I'm here. And I'm like, but I don't like it. And he said, but I'm here. I had to allow him to heal me there. And now, you know what, now, you know, we back together and, and my husband, like, you just, cause God healed me that I, I began to learn. I, I liked it being by myself because he, it was a healed place for me. And see, a lot of times God allows certain situations and you got to say, I'm accepted in the beloved. I used to say that about four or five times. I'm accepted in the beloved. Even like now, if, 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 if I feel rejected about something. I begin to say, I'm accepted in the beloved. God loves me. God loves me. And he'll begin to tell me if they don't accept you, it's because it's a reason they don't accept you. So you got to move on. And so now I move on and I don't be trying to make nobody like me that don't like me because I know those who he want to like me, they going to like me. I, I'm not going to lose any sleep about people who don't like me. I'm not going to lose any sleep about people who don't want me to be, who don't want to be in my life. I'm not going to lose any sleep about that. I'm going to accept those who want me. And this is what we got to do. We, we, we've been putting too much pressure trying to make people want you that don't want you. No, God is saying you, you, you spend too much time on them. Look forward to what he got for you because you're missing your blessing. Because even with some of you all, that's how the, the man of God is going to fall in love with you because he's going to find the completeness in you. Because he's going to see that you're not insecure. He's going to see that you genuinely, you are whole in God. Because you're saying, I'm accepted in the beloved. I'm his beloved. I'm his. I'm the apple of his eye. And so I'm not going to be, look at me, look at me. No, no, no. no. That, that's a form of immaturity. We are women of God. And so we got to learn to be accepted by the beloved. 
God, look, I'm the apple of his eye. So if I'm the apple of his eye, I'm not going to be jumping over hoops and strings to try to make you see me. No, I got to walk in this confidence. And this is what being healed is about. Walking in the confidence of God and not trying to get seen. I just want them. No, 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 no. I ain't trying to make you look at me like that because he sees me. So if he sees me, I ain't going to try to do all of that because if I'm the one for you, you're going to see the God. You're going to see the glory. Glory on the inside of me. See, that's what being delivered by the being delivered uh, from me is about. You're learning how to love yourself. And so when you're learning how to love yourself, you ain't trying to jump flips and stuff to make people like you. Because I dealt with that spirit of self-hatred. I dealt with that spirit of being a man pleaser. I I, I would try to buy people, buy you to be my friend. And oh, no, 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 I ain't doing that. Either you like me or you don't. And that's fine with me. I'm not. You got to understand God needs for us to mature. Because you are the Christ. Come on here. You are the Christos. You are the little Christ with a little C. You are the little God with a little G on the earth. And you got to carry his aroma on the inside of you. Because he lives within this house. This is why we can't allow demonic spirits to live in here. This is why we can't get offended when we hear the truth. No, I love God because he let me know what's in this house so I can get this house clean. Because I got purpose. I got to work to do. I ain't. I, I, I can't walk around in my house smelling. I can't walk around being dysfunctional. No, I want to be, I want to be pleasing to my father. I want him to be glad to live in this house. I want when I lay hands, I know that when I lay hands, something is going to happen. Why? Because the father lives in this house. He proves himself that he's in his house. That when I pray, I see things happen. When I call demons to get out, they got to get out because he lives in this house. You understand what I'm saying? So God got a purpose for your life. Do not be moved by what people say. You just break the frame. We got to learn to break frames, break these images, break these words that people say about you. The Bible say in Revelation 12, the accuser of the brethren, he accused the saints day and night. So that's telling you that the devil is a slanderer. He's trying to slander your character. He's trying to give you a bad name at least twice. So you know that those are prayer points that will not change. So when you get up in the morning, I tear down every negative word and thought and imagination that have come up against me. Every demonic seed that was sown in my dreams, I uproot you right now in the name of Jesus die by fire. Lord, I thank you that I'm clothed in your word. I'm clothed in you. Come on here. The Bible say in John 1, your word, the words became flesh. You got to understand your words are manifesting. Even though we cast these devils out, but also we releasing a new spirit that God is doing something new. You got to understand you're going to see the manifestations of what we prayed during these 3 a.m. And you're going to tag me and say, apostle, this right here manifests. That's what somebody texted me today. Apostle, this manifests. You got to understand the word going to come to pass. The word is going to manifest. You got to begin to be that vessel that I'm clothed in the word. Come on here. I'm the spoken word. I'm a product of the word. And so my words do what he sent them to do because I ain't speaking my own words. I'm speaking the words of my father. See, you got to begin to understand you are a woman of valor. You are a woman of authority. You are a man of power. These are declarations that you need to speak over your life daily because you're clothing yourself with the word of God. Because when you clothe yourself with the word of God, you are re-imaging. The Bible says he created us in the likeness and image. So you're re-imaging yourself because where well, they said I was a liar, but I cast out that lying demon. Now I'm a woman of truth. So every day I'm a woman of truth. My name, Elisa, means truth. So I can't help but to be the truth. No, I am the truth. I speak the truth. I live the truth. I'm becoming what my name is. See, you got to begin to manifest what you are because the enemy is banking on you to listen to them demonic frames that people spoke over you and what you spoke over yourself. You got to break the demonic frame because God's saying, I got a purpose for your life, people of God. 
I don't know about you, but I smell the aroma of God. And I'm telling you, God has did some things this morning during this 3 a.m. prayer. And I pray that even, um, do you not know that even as you can, I want to say this before I go, you got to understand as you cast out spirits, you know, you got to continue to put this word in you now. You got to continue to pray. You got to continue to study and you got to, because when we cast out those demonic spirits, those spirits are going to try to come back and they're going to try to look back for a place to stay. Now, when them jokers try to come back, you're going to find the word and you got to go. But if you do not keep your house uh, clean and put and filled up with the word, the Bible say when the spirit go, it comes back looking. And if it don't see no word in the house, guess what? It's going to bring seven more demons stronger. This is why I tell people deliverance is no joke. This isn't because a one time fix. This is a lifestyle. You got to maintain your deliverance by staying in fellowship with your God, by staying in fellowship because God is your husband. You got to stay in fellowship by letting this word deal with you. So when the word deal with you, that's how you keep your house clean. So if he say, uh, 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 be angry, but sin not. So if you reading that scripture, because he's telling you, something inside of you, you won't let that spirit of anger came in. So Holy Spirit, show me who, who, what, what, what I don't did. Let him deal with you so that you can keep this house clean. Come on here. We don't have time to go back to be casting out demons that we just cast out so that next Saturday we cast it out something else. We don't need to be casting out the same thing. This is why I'm saying why God got me doing this allow the spirit of God, because in my coaching, I charge for this, but this is something that God just told me to do right now to help his people. But in my personal coaching business, this is what I charge for. So you got to begin to understand, take advantage of having somebody to walk you through deliverance. So then now this is something that you know how to do to help other people. Amen. So also too, I want y'all to tune in to Tuesday at 6.15. So we're going to, I'm going to be doing deliver me from me nuggets. And so by this being mental health month, I'm going to have some mental health professionals that's going to be giving us some nuggets. So tune in with me Tuesday at 6.15. It's nothing, probably about 15 minutes. The most. Also too, if you haven't got my press CDs inbox me, you get two CDs for uh $20. Also, too, is something else I had to say. And thank y'all again for tuning in. If this word has been a blessing to you, please share, share. And if it bless you, uh, so I see. You know, it ain't like I'm saying, uh, make me, you, why, why do I so a see? You so a see because you saying, I agree with what, what happened tonight. And Lord, this is what I'm believing to manifest in my life because this is good ground. That's all what that is. We got to start. We got to start doing the principles of the kingdom and watch that seed just blow up. People who I sow seed into and then all of a sudden stuff just start blessing, stuff just start happening. We got to learn to stop just being a taker because how you how do you think that your ministry going to grow if you don't ever sow into anybody? You should sow something into other people because when you begin to start ministering, you'll begin to say, okay, Lord, is the word helping any people? I got some people that tell me, Apostle, I sold into you and that seed like God started moving or this blessed me and I sow into people too. I don't just say you sow into me. No, I sow into other people and hear me. It ain't always money. You can sow materialistic things. You can sow love. You can buy somebody lunch. We got to start sowing, especially during this, this time of uh, this pandemic. You got to understand it's seed time and harvest. God is going to continue to bless you as you sow. And as you grow, sow. And watch God keep giving you back blessings. Amen. So we got to start doing these principles because we are men and women of honor and we serve the King of Kings that got more than enough. Amen. So I pray that you all was blessed. I pray that you got some, did y'all get some breakthroughs? Let me know. Did y'all get some breakthroughs? I pray that y'all got some breakthroughs and I pray that the spirit of the Lord just rests upon you and that we bind up every spirit of backlash, retaliation, and revenge. And we believe and receive it by faith in Jesus name. I see y'all next Saturday at 3 a.m. on Let's Pray with Deliver Me From Me. Amen. Be blessed.